Hi, that Paul guy. Uh, so, first video of the year, right out of the gate, we're going to start with something that ah, may be good, maybe not. We'll see what happens. But in, in this case, what we're doing is we're taking a look at the Ryzen 3 3100. This is coming across because I was actually checking two other processors, and my recommendation was a little bit something different because this processor wasn't really available. So today we're going to take a look at this processor, the, the Ryzen 3 3100, and tell you why, I, why we got here. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so this was all brought along because last week I was comparing uh, an older Ryzen 5 1600 6 core 12 thread processor against a newer 4 core 8 thread Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G. Now, the graphics part of the, the G on the 4350, that, that's not really relevant in this case. I was just looking at the older 6 core versus the newer 4 core. And the reason why this came about is because the video that I had done previously on minimum specs actually listed, uh, there was a Halo Infinite that we were testing, and we were testing Battlefield 4 2042. Now, the reason why we got here is because on the Battlefield 42 specs, the Intel minimum specs actually have a newer i5 listed as the minimum and an older i7 listed as the recommended. So I started thinking, is an older 6-core going to be that much better than a newer 4-core on the AMD side? I figured I would go ahead and check that and test that because the older 6 core is built on the 14 nanometer process, the original Zen process, not even supported by Windows 11 anymore. And the newer Zen 2, you had Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, and now you've got Zen 3. But the Zen 2 process, 7 nanometer, those were all your 3000 series G, uh, CPUs and your 4000 series like laptops and some of the uh, in-betweens like the 4300, the 4600, 4700, and the 50s, the uh, Ryzen 3 Pro, Ryzen 5 Pro, Ryzen 7 Pro. And so those are a little bit harder to find because they're usually OEM, but you can find it. Now, the, we were taking a look at that video and we were looking and my recommendation at this time, even though the 4350 did end up being in some cases a little bit better than the 1600 and maybe even preferable overall, the price is just not worth it. So my recommendation at that point was just to go ahead and pick up the newer uh, Zen 3 5600G, you know, for 260 bucks, which is about the premium or maybe just a little bit more than some of these places are asking for the 3100 or 3300X, or for that matter, for a 4350G, um, you could, you know, get a much newer processor and it would still, it would even have onboard graphics. So it's newer, better, highly available, but coming to find out that being able to find this 3100 at a really, really good price, 150 bucks, kind of makes me think about changing my recommendation just a little bit. So, okay, so to test all of these, I used an Asus Prime B450 M. A2 mini ATX motherboard, 16 gig of Team Group uh, Vulcan Z, uh, running at 3200 megatransfers. It's DD4, DDR4 memory. I use that ASRock Challenger RX 6600 XT video card because I didn't want to have the the CPUs constrained at all by any GPU. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the GPU was going to be uh, just fine for these tests and it wasn't going to hold it back in any way. Um, used a couple of SSDs to go along with it. I think, or I think I used an SSD and a, and a, a regular spinning hard drive. Um, and then used the, the same Wraith Spire cooler for both of these, even though they, uh, they can get by with the thinner cooler. I went with the bigger one. So we didn't have any kind of heat problems. As a matter of fact, heat on both of these were excellent. They never ventured uh, any higher than about the 52 to 55 degree range. It was phenomenal. Uh, and to because the test that I was trying to use, the case, uh, it, I left it open, but I was not able to fit that 6600 XT into the case. So I actually had to use a PCI extension cable for the PCI Express. And uh, so that's not on this list, but I did use one of those. And I'll kind of, I'll do some testing with that a little bit more often too. But I just kind of wanted to check those out. But for the time being, that's the rig that I use to go ahead and test all these. Now you'll notice when I do some of these uh, tests, I left off 900p and 720p because there's a thing of diminishing returns. 
I wanted to make sure that I wasn't using any settings that were too high. So we're only testing 1080p and below. And for the most part, we're testing either the highest or just under the highest. Um, and then we're going to go down to 1080p low. Anything lower than that, we're getting the same frame rates on 900p and 720p. There's no sense in testing it. So if we're just testing 1080p, they'll give us more than sufficient amount of information. We'll be able to compare these fairly and we'll kind of see where they're at. So anybody that's seen the channel by now knows that I usually test a suite of uh, benchmarked games that I can kind of get an idea and I try to mix it up a little bit CPU GPU and and just try to get a feel for what what's going to work out and what's going to do well in this case I went ahead and I kept the figures for the Ryzen 5 1600 I kept the figures for the Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G and I added in the 13 uh, I'm sorry the, I added in the Ryzen 3 3100 I added the 3100 right in the middle because it was introduced in between the two uh, and by the time I started doing some of these charts I started kind of rethinking my strategy but you know what I left it in order of the way they were released so the 1600 would be on top that would be in green i believe it is orange will be the uh 3100 and blue will be the 4350. we start out always with shadow of the tomb raider and off to a quick start it looks really really good for the 3100 right now keep in mind it's a 150 dollars processor if you can find it and i believe i found it on newegg for 150 bucks borderlands 3 much of the same. It looked really good, really strong, and I was a little bit surprised by this point that it was doing better either, even than the 4350G, even though they're both 4-core 8-thread, I, I thought the newer 4-core would do a little bit better. Far Cry 5, same thing again. We're still looking at, at uh, probably about the same amount of lead that we had in Borderlands 3. It looks really, really strong. And even in Forza Horizon 4, which is a beautiful game, by the way. If you haven't tried that, I'm also going to pick up 5. But Forza, Forza Horizon 4 is a gorgeous game. And again, still, we are the, the 3100 just looks phenomenal here. I went ahead and, of course, I did check World War Z and Horizon Zero Dawn, and we'll show those charts as well. But that's where it started to kind of look more normal than anything. Uh, it's looking uh, pretty much like, well, it, it's looking mortal. It's not looking superhero anymore, but still very solid. And, and in the case of, uh, it's about where you would expect it to be. It kind of fell in between, but still a pretty strong showing and very, very, you know, a, a very good processor. A four core, eight thread. I, I really, this did better, I think. I, I think all three of these did a little bit better than I thought they might have. Uh, with CSGO and the synthetics, uh, CSGO performed better than all the rest of them. And then with the synthetics, it just kind of fell in between. And it did a pretty good job of, of uh, holding steady with the 4350G. In some cases, you could see that the extra cores on the 1600 did, did help it out a little bit. So overall, I was pretty happy with the Ryzen 3 3100 and thought for $150, it was a great deal. Maybe even enough to get me to change my recommendation from the 5600. Uh, although the 5600, I mean, it, it cost about 260 bucks, but for about $110, $120 less than that, if you can pick up a Ryzen 3 3100 and you already have a graphics card, this might be a solid deal. Now, what it also made me think is that Intel has a couple of chips that are under $150 or right about that $150 range. And I might be able to lay my hands on, uh, say, a, a 10400 or a, a 10100. The 10400 is a 6-core 12-thread, I believe it is, and the 10100 is a 4-core 8-thread. Now, both of those are under $150 or right around that $150. So for the same price, I can get 6-core 12-thread in a 10th generation Intel, or for a little bit cheaper, I can get a four core eight thread. Now we're not gonna talk about the price in the motherboard, we're just gonna say that's a given because that's anytime you're going from a platform, you know, one platform to another or a major generation change. Like now we're talking about uh, AMD going from AM4 to AM5 and we're talking about Intel going from their uh, current generation of 10th and 11th gen up to 12th generation needing a whole new uh, setup as well. So the motherboard is just, that's your investment. But we are going to see if that same $150 can buy a better processor on the Intel side that we can match up and do benchmarks against this 3100. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do both of them at the same time, or maybe I'll figure out uh, maybe one of them first and uh, compare it to these. But we'll, that will be the next thing we try to tackle is just kind of seeing what that same value would be for Team Blue. And... Uh, if that changes my recommendation 
you know, even further past that. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, just, I mean, hang tight with me. Don't, if you're not subscribed already, please do. I uh, still want to try to make 500 subscribers. Uh, it's not going to be the, by the end of the year, obviously. It's that end of the year already passed. Uh, hopefully, it'll be pretty soon. I, I want to be able to get on some of the affiliate programs and be able to share some of that stuff with you guys. If you like the video, go ahead and toss a like on it. If you didn't like the video, you can hit the dislike, but kind of let me know why. Uh, don't forget to visit me on the other social medias. And uh, until later in the week, I think I'm going to do a video on benchmarking. Uh, I did do one on how to find out or how to do or how to benchmark your games, but now I've got some tips and tricks and all that stuff that might help. So if anybody's trying to look at, at doing that type of stuff, uh, I think that might be one of my upcoming videos. Obviously, one of my other ones is going to be with an Intel processor, so stay tuned for that as well. But until next time, folks, that's all i got for right now, so I'll see you later.